Here are five cybersecurity projects for beginners that you can start today. First up is building your SOC home lab. This is especially perfect for anyone who wants to be an SOC analyst and you can build your own at home SOC lab with free tools following this course on Let's Defend.io. The entire training course covers PFSense, Active Directory, Windows Workstations, Syslon, and CrowdSec. Because SOC analysts are such a popular entry-level role in cybersecurity, this is a great place to start or even just considering going through an SOC simulation, which Let's Defend IO also has, where they will essentially provide you the platform to view the dashboards, the logs, the ticketing queues, the email inbox that a real-world SOC team would be monitoring, and then using the simulation to get that hands-on experience that you would typically get in an SOC analyst role. Of course, there are many other guides out there to building your own SOC lab, plus of course, an awesome project to add onto your resume along with the others on this list. Next up is to run your first vulnerability scan using Burp Suite. While Burp Suite does have a professional and an enterprise level product, there's also a community edition, so anyone can use it. It's completely free for beginners and is relatively easy to use. In fact, there are lots of guides out there. The first thing you'll be doing is downloading and installing Burp Suite, getting Burp Proxy set up, setting your target scope, and then running your first scan. All this is very well documented on the Burp Suite website, but of course, ChatGPT is also your best friend. Burp Suite also makes it really easy for you because they pre-provide you a vulnerable site that you can use to scan, and that is ginandjuice.shop. If you type in this URL into your browser, you'll see a note at the top that this web application is vulnerable on purpose, specifically to run your first ever scan using Burp Suite, so that you can see the entire process of what kinds of vulnerabilities that it looks for, the process to set up the scans, how to analyze the actual findings of vulnerabilities from your scans, as well as of course optimizing, and then of course coming up with remediations. In this case, even though you may not be providing remediation to a development team. As part of this project, I highly recommend documenting everything down in a vulnerability report so that you can also add that to your resume because honestly cybersecurity is just as much the technical work as well as it is the documentation side of things. So the report is really the final product that you're going to be showing to your teams, your managers, your leadership, any stakeholders. And imagine having that final vulnerability report ready to be able to show to employers during a potential interview if it comes up and being able to share with the hiring manager so they get an idea of your project experience. The tutorial on Portswicker gives you everything you need with screenshots as well as tips on configuring the scans so they have everything you need when you're running your first scan. Again, a lot of this can come with trial and error as well as figuring out how to interpret the scan results. So this is a great project to start with if you're interested in vulnerability management or an offensive security role. Next up is analyzing network traffic using Wireshark. Wireshark was one of the first networking tools that I learned when I was a student. It is also free to use and very popular, so it'll be a great addition to your toolkit. By the way, for all these projects, I have everything linked in my description so you can follow along or you can go straight to ChatGPT and have them create customized projects specifically for you, which is also something that I often do. First up, you'll have to download Wireshark and then begin capturing the data packets on your network. You can play around with the filters to capture certain network traffic that you want to see. Click Start Capture and then start seeing the packets that Wireshark is capturing. It'll provide you information like, like the time the packet was captured, the source and destination, the protocol it's using, as well as packet length. So now that you have the basics down for using Wireshark, Try Hack Me has a great beginner challenge specifically for using Wireshark basics on how to analyze the packet navigating it, packet filtering, as well as more advanced challenges for deep packet analysis. This is a great project to add onto your resume if you're interested in network security, or even if you're just someone interested in doing CTFs or capture the flags that involve networking, you may find yourself using a tool like Wireshark. Project number four is on scripting, automating something with Python, writing a bash script, creating a basic JavaScript project, while I personally don't think that you need coding to get into cybersecurity, it will definitely make your life easier. When I was interviewing for my last security analyst position, part of one of my interviews was a coding interview, so that is something to keep in mind. Even though companies may not expect you to code on a day-to-day -day basis working as a security analyst, you may very likely find yourself using some scripting or basic automation skills while you're working on the job. And it also makes it easier to talk to developers if you're able to understand their code and what it's doing. If you find yourself in a position when you have to explain to them a vulnerability or potential finding or a zero day exploit that may impact your code base. If you're new to coding, I typically recommend starting with Python because it is relatively easy to read and it's great for beginners. 
I've also added a link below of cybersecurity projects for you to get an idea of how useful coding skills can be if you're potentially going into a security engineering role now or in the future. You can create key logging software, learn how to encrypt an image, or even creating something as simple as a password strength checker based on the OWASP standards. Most of these projects have sample source code available, so it's a great way to get started as a beginner, even if you have no coding experience. And the last project is scanning a network using Nmap. Hack the Box has a network enumeration course with Nmap, which is great for beginners interested in offensive and defensive security. You'll be covering the basics of Nmap, host discovery and port scanning, how to save your scan results, service enumeration, using the Nmap scripting language, as well as firewall and IDS and IPS evasion. Nmap is one of the most popular tools, if not the most popular tool in networking and is used by IT professionals, red teamers, as well as the blue team. So it's another great tool to add onto your resume. But the key thing I want to note in this video is that once you finish these projects, you really want to show them off on your resume as well as you can. Again, ChatGPT will be a huge help in potentially helping you write some really good bullet points on your resume for these projects. But I just want to make sure that even though you've done these projects, if you're not able to communicate them effectively, whether it's just written down on your resume or during an interview, then it won't matter how impressive your projects are if the hiring manager doesn't know what you actually worked on. So once you finish these projects, make sure you spend a lot of time being able to document them well so that they're well portrayed on your resume when you're going into those cybersecurity interviews and talking about them in a meaningful way to show your potential employers the skills that you have, the tools you know how to use, your technical experience, as well as of course your ability to document things. I say this pretty often, but if you're a pen tester and you finish your pen test, but if you're not able to write a well-documented pen test report for the development team to use to understand what vulnerabilities you found, steps to recreate them and how to remediate them, or if you aren't able to present your findings to a less technical audience like a senior leadership team, then it doesn't matter how well your pen test went if you're not able to effectively communicate your findings and demonstrate all the hard work that you've put into it. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below, any other projects you would add to this list. I'm sure there are many more. If there are any other videos you'd like to see from me in the future, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And I'll be adding them to my backlog, which I am currently working through. In fact, this video I've been planning to make for months, but just haven't gotten around to it. But I'm glad I'm finally putting this out there, especially for those of you who are currently on the job market whether you're looking for internships, full-time jobs, etc. Thanks again for watching. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And if this video was helpful to you, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!